So here with Dennis Kang. What's going on in Montreal for you these days? Uh, well, I live here now, and uh, I'm training for uh, my next fight, which is November 14th uh, in Manchester against Michael Bisping. A lot of people are hoping you knock him and he goes out again, just like Handel. What's your take on that? Yeah, I tell you, I, everybody has come up to me and told me that they wanted me to to really hurt him and do things. Man, I, I'm starting to feel bad for the guy, you know, because nobody likes this guy. So, you know what? I I don't really care about that. I I just want to win my fight, man. You know, it's like I've said in, in past interviews. It's, I'm not fighting Michael Bisping. I'm just fighting a clone. You know, a, a nameless, faceless body. That's just my opponent. That's it. I don't make the fight personal at all. What are you training in? Uh, what am I training in? I'm doing this pretty much the same as as uh, for my other fights. You know, I never really changed my training. I just changed my strategy. You know, so there are, you know, certain areas that I'm going to put more emphasis on. But the training generally stays the same. You still going to bring it to him? Yeah, of course. I'm going to get out there and try to. to you know, I, I always come out there and try to, to throw bombs and, and beat him down. You know, and I do everything pretty dynamically, you know, I think that's why a lot of people like my style is I don't really like to, to do anything half speed, you know, so I think that, uh, that that's the kind of fight that you can always expect from me. What does uh, training in Quebec bring to your game? Uh, just a lot of good uh, good sparring, you know, like I get here, I get to spar with uh, with GSP, I get David Wazo and all the guys at TriStar, you know, I get uh, the training with Faraz Ahabi, who's an incredible coach. Uh, the physical conditioning of John Chamber, who's one of the best guys I've ever worked with for, uh, for physical conditioning, you know, so it's definitely a very fresh uh, take on my training. What's your take on the division you're in? It's tough, man. And you know what? Any division is tough in UFC. There's no, there's no easy fights, you know. There's no, of course, there's guys that are tougher than others, but on average, everybody's tough in any weight. My division, it's, it used to be... So so, one of the weaker, but it's quickly shaping up to be one of the tougher ones. You know, there's all these new guys now. There's uh, Akiyama, there's uh, Vitor Belfort, you know, there's some good guys. What was your take on the Franklin Belfort fight? Man, don't sleep on Vitor, you know. I think uh, he got a little bit lucky against Franklin, but you got to be good to be lucky, you know what they say, and lucky to be good. So, you know, he uh, did well. Not many people have been able to, uh, to put Franklin out so fast. How do you see yourself beating Michael Bisping? What do you think it takes to beat him? I think, uh, like I said before, his main thing, in my opinion, his main uh, his main attribute is his cardio. You know, I don't think he's a particularly strong guy, or he's not, you know, very. He's not that good of a striker or a grappler. He's a better striker than he is a grappler, but he doesn't shine, you know, in, in any one area. He's just. He's a good, he's got a good cardio and he's a good athlete, he's a good competitor, competitor, you know. So I think you really got to come bring it and be ready for a, a long fight, you know. So that's what I'm ready for. I'm ready for the fight to be just a, a war with lots of scrambles and lots of, uh, just like a war of attrition, you know. Does it matter at all that it's on his home turf? No, not at all. It's, it doesn't matter, you know. You got to remember, you know, I've fought on people's home turfs before. When I used to fight in Japan Pride, it was always the home turf when I was fighting a Japanese, you know, so it's, it is what it is, you know, I don't really pay attention to that. Why do you think uh, the guys who used to be in Pride uh, are still prevalent? Why do I think that they're still doing good? Mm -hmm. I think, because, I mean, Pride was a high level of competition, you know, Pride, you gotta remember, with Pride, it's not like UFC, you had, first of all, you had one, one long 10 minute round before, and then a five, so that was pretty hard. Second of all, you only found out who you were fighting like two, three weeks before, you know, so it was a little bit different than over here where you can you can prepare adequately for an opponent two months before, you know. Also, you had the, the long flight to Japan, you know, 12 hours to, to get over there and whatnot with all the jet lag, you know. So going through that kind of makes it a little bit easier, a little bit nicer to fight an organization like UFC where you know who you're fighting two months earlier. You. you don't have to fight. Uh, so, you know, so um, so far away. And the rounds are 3 5. You know, you got to break a little bit faster. What do you have to say to these young kids coming up who want to be the next fighter? Just follow your dream, you know. All these MMA fighters out there, myself included, all the, the GSPs, Anderson Silvas, they're just regular people who, who have a dream and a passion and just follow it. You know, anybody can do this. It doesn't matter. So, how are the French women treating you? Uh, the what? Is it French women? The French women? Yeah. Good. I'm, uh, I'm 
I've almost locked up with one. <laughs> so. Cool. Anything else you want to put out there? Huh? Anything else you want to put out there? That's it. Appreciate it. No problem, man.